he's the shoved man. The hawk said it before and I'll say it again. Growing up, Test was one of my guys. I don't really know why. Maybe it was just that I kind of resonated with being a miserable loner who was bigger than most of the other kids. He was always one of those guys who was on the verge of pushing through to the next level and the WWF clearly fought a lot of him. He captured every title going except for the big one. But he was majorly lacking one department, his promo skills. I don't know if I'd say that they were abysmal, but I never really heard him talk for a lengthy amount of time. By 2004, he had been mostly relegated to heat before getting released in November 2004. It's worth noting too he was suffering from a neck injury. Surprisingly, he returned in March 2006, but he would be drafted to the new ECW brand, which is what we'll be focusing on today. Because today, we've got to find out if testing ECW was any good. The general consensus seems to be, no it wasn't. We've got to find that out. Just before we start, I have to say I think it's absolutely crazy that when Test passed away in March 2009, he was only 33. That is insane to me because it felt like he was around forever. These were dark times on the ECW brand. They hyped Test's debut up for a few weeks with some generic adverts. First up, I have to say I'm disappointed that it doesn't seem that he'll be trying out anything new. But let's wait to pass judgement. Around this time, both Kurt Angle and RVD would be going through problems, and ECW would lose one star and have to relegate the other. This is going to narrow the talent pool of wrestlers for Test to face. Alright, here we go. Straight away his music is the same. But the guy must have been shoving the roids hard during his time away. He's bigger than ever. He takes on Al Snow for his debut match. As Test beats the Hawk out of Al Snow, the crowd loudly chant, You take steroids. He hits a big boot to the gut of Al. And then he wins in about one minute of a TKO. Not sure if that's a new finisher for him. He takes Al Snow's mannequin head and just punts it into the crowd of happiness. Look, it wasn't an incredible debut, but I'm sort of intrigued to see where this goes, so I'll call this a good start. After struggling to beat Tommy Dreamer in his next match and having to resort to cheating, he randomly forms an alliance with Mike Knox by taking out the Sandman with a really nice TKO. Hey, at least it's a storyline. It'll probably suck, but it's better than nothing. Unfortunately, I have to immediately take the credit away as Tess talked to Mike Knox and he sounds completely out of control. He doesn't even know what he's saying. And he's just talking about Kelly Kelly, exactly like his old character would do. So Test is essentially against the ECW Originals. Things get interesting by match 3 as Test is involved in a traditional ECW match. He makes an effort to try and be a bit more extreme in this one and he wins the match. He's still undefeated in ECW. Mike Knox and Test have Paul Heyman's backing as he goes toward the ECW Originals. So it just kind of continues like this for a few weeks. Test team with Mike Knox to take on ECW Originals and Test remains undefeated. Nothing interesting enough to comment on. That is until... A tag match with Knox and Test taken on RVD and Sabu. The match gets 13 minutes and during the match it becomes clear that RVD and Test have great in-ring chemistry. Their styles seem to mesh really nicely. It's his best match so far. Lots of really fun moves, Test putting his body on the line and this feels worthy of being associated with a brand called Extreme Championship Wrestling. I'm starting to think that these Extreme Rules matches could be a good fit for Test. And although Test and Knox would lose this match, I really loved this one, it was pure entertainment. And Test hasn't been pinned yet, so it's two beaks up from this hawk. What's really weird to me is we're about quarter of the way through this run and Test hasn't done a proper big boot yet. That move was so popular at one point. Test is like Paul Heyman's problem solver in ECW. He's the second biggest heel on the show after the big show. We move on now to Test's best singles match in ECW. He takes on Rob Van Dam in an Extreme Rules match. This is a pay-per-view quality match and it has all the spots you'd want to see out of a Van Dam match. He misses his leg drop across the guardrail, but he does manage to hit a rolling thunder on the steps outside. Tess responds punting a chair into Rob's face. Rob throws the chair back in his face to an incredible crowd noise. A sunset flip powerbomb for a table out of the ring from Rob. Tess comes close to winning a few times with the assistance of Paul Heyman. The crowd are completely engrossed in this match. Tess gets the chair kicked in his face, but he's able to hit the diving elbow drop on the chair. He looks to finish Rob off for a table which is reversed and Tess is almost beaten. Van Damme kicks Test onto the table and he takes out Heyman's goo to the ringside. But he can't put Test through the table because the fucking Big Show interferes and dumps Rob through it. Test wins with the TKO. Big win for Test despite the help. I wasn't expecting him to win a 21 minute pay-per-view quality match against Rob Van Damme. Another two beaks up from the Hawk. Why did people hate this run again? We've got a six man now with Test continuing to go against the ECW guys. He looks like a real threat in this match. He does a double backbreaker into a side slam on Sabu. He ain't done yet though because he shunts Sabu into the ring pole time and time again. Test vs Hardcore Holly isn't exactly a match that sounds like it belongs at ECW. You wouldn't expect to see or even want to see this match. 
and the hawk doesn't want to see it either. This is the first time in this run I start to understand the hatred. The crowd chant boring the whole match, there's no cool moves, and both guys have pretty dislikable personalities, so who are you even cheering for here? They still try. Tess takes a suplex out of the ring, fair play for that. Apart from that, the match is long and boring and Tess wins. Just the second thing in this run I've disliked so far. This doesn't elevate him, this unconvincing win brings him down to Bob Holly's level. But it's like he was listening to me as he smashes Bob Holly with a chair a time and time again after the match. It goes a bit away to help him, but the next match will prove again to take the credit away. Mike Knox seems to be gone and instead Test is often associated with the big show. And fans on my channel will know this guy has ruined many a wrestler's run in the company. So they're doing this tag match against Test and RVD and it just goes on and on and on for 20 minutes. And as expected, Test now seems to be playing second fiddle to the big show. Things continue in the wrong direction because Bobby Lashley has joined ECW. Keep watching to find out how that affects Tess later on. I wish they'd kept him away from the Big Show and Bob Holly. It's making Tess look like a dog. He does get to compete at Survivor Series 2006 in a traditional Survivor Series match. His roid gut is getting out of control at this point. It's really noticeable. In typical fashion for this channel, Tess is on the team of... Ugh, team Big Show. This match does finally mark the return of the Big Boot, which Tess hits on Rob Van Dam. And Test actually has an elimination to his name in this high profile matchup. Lashley spears Test on the outside, which is probably going to be the turning point of this video. Sabu beats Test with a springboard DDT. Yeah, he beat RVD, but he really needs to do a bit more in this match for me. Come to think of it, is this the first time Test has been pinned? But seeing as it didn't happen on the ECW show, I guess he's still undefeated on that brand. Okay, on to the final ECW pay per view, December to Dismember 2006, the Extreme Elimination Chamber. What makes it extreme? Well, it has weapons, of course. Now, Tess doesn't start this match, but he is the second man to be released from his... He has a crowbar in his hand, and he's a scary sight. I think his opponents felt the same way. He big boots Bob Holly, and he's gone. Then he smashes Rob with chair shots whilst he's on top of a pod and throws him to the mat. Tess climbs the pod, and he flies with an elbow drop onto a steel chair on top of Rob. And once again, Tess has pinned RVD. That was insane for a man of his size. They sell it really well too, with Big Show and Lashley both looking on in shock. At this point, the crowd turn on the match because CM Punk and Rob Van Dam have been eliminated. But that isn't Test's fault. There was only two popular guys in this match. ECW just didn't have the star power to be doing its own pay-per-view. Now Bobby Lashley is in the match. He kicks Test from the top and dives on him with a lariat. Test smashes into a table inside a pod. It's not looking good. He literally can't land a single punch on Lashley and he's eventually beaten by a spear. Bobby Lashley goes on to win the match and become the ECW champion. It's going down like I thought it would. Let's try and look on the bright side. Two eliminations for Test in this match. We do get another singles match between RVD and Test, which won't get any complaints from me after the last one. But unfortunately this match sucks and they fail to capitalise on Test's dominance at Elimination Chamber. Test wins again though, somehow. It was neither good nor bad, I don't know. Following that, Test cuts a promo about why he deserves an ECW world title shot. It doesn't even look like him. I don't know if it's the lighting, but I like that he's now talked about as a main eventer. The next match features a cool triple tower spot. Van Damme and Sabu mostly work together on Tess. And then Tess scores another sneaky victory. It's cool that he's still winning, but why does the man his size have to sneak his victories? He loses a fan pole for the next challenger for the ECW title, but then he throws a tantrum and he hits Van Damme with a big boot straight after the match. They're calling him God's gift to ECW. I somehow don't think this gimmick will catch on. We kick off 2007 with a Tess promo. And this promo is probably the most prolonged period you will hear Tess talk for in his WWE career. He talks about three minutes non-stop. It's not particularly great or terrible. He beats Sabu in three minutes, meaning he's still unpinned on ECW TV. I also think a lot of the hate comes from the original ECW fans. Tess has run through all of their guys. But if you hate Tess, it's about time for you to enjoy this video. Test is refusing to wrestle anymore because he's upset that he hasn't been given a title shot at the world title. And he actually has a fair point because he's beaten everyone but the champion. He makes sense. Test ends up interfering in a match between Bobby Lashley and RVD, ruining their title match. Probably the last good thing he'll do in this video. That attack finally seems to get him in the title picture. Bobby Lashley defends in a triple threat against Test and RVD. The match is pretty long, but Test is useless in this one. I didn't see him land a single move the entire match until he connects with the diving elbow drop on Lashley. RVD hits Test with a frog splash, but when he gets up, Lashley spears him and power slams him to end the match. Test did nothing in this so-called big match, but still undefeated so far. He hits Lashley with the ECW title. Yeah, this match sucked. I don't want to see these two guys together, but I'm going to have to get used to it from the look of it. 
Now Lashley and Tess must have a non-title Extreme Rules match. At this point, Tess must have been hitting the roid so hard his face and back are covered in pus and juice from all the chemicals in his body. Usually these sorts of problems get better with age, but Tess is getting worse every week. It's just not appealing to look at. The match mostly features Tess dumping in his nappy of fear of Bobby Lashley. Tess just doesn't look like a threat in there of Lashley. He doesn't get any offense in. Lashley hits the power slam and after six months, Tess has officially been pinned. Who the hell would even want to see the following match now? For some reason, they've decided to put these two on pay-per-view at Raw Rumble 2007. I have no idea why, they clearly weren't going to be getting a good match and Lashley's already proven to be better than him. Here we are then, ECW title on the line. Test is looking seriously unwell at this point. Once again, Test doesn't look to be on Lashley's level. He's speared down almost straight away. The crowd are a mixture of silence and boos. Test actually hits the big boot in this match which Lashley kicks out of, a move that's normally extremely well protected. This causes Test to dump in his nappy of fear and get counted out. Lashley gets him back in the ring and power slams him anyway. Simply terrible and the worst match of the pay-per-view. But remarkably, they still weren't done with having Lashley and Tess crash together. Tess has his final WWE match again for Lashley's title. Once again, Lashley wins this match with the power slam with Tess getting in minimal attacks. Then randomly The Undertaker appears and choke slams Tess. It was announced just after this that Tess had been released from his WWE contract. Six months later he wrestled one match for TNA and he did a short tour of Europe and Japan. He announced this would be his retirement tour, which I do find kind of strange. In March 2009, Test was found dead in his apartment from an accidental overdose of pain medication. A brain scan indicated that Test had been suffering from CTE, the same thing as Chris Benoit. Well, that was definitely interesting, but at the same time a bit sad to watch. All that's left to do is figure out if Test on ECW was any good. Ultimately, when he had opponents like RVD and Sabu, it was a lot of fun. Two of the matches in this run were actually really good. But it was all downhill when he became a big show lackey and jobbing to Lashley. He didn't get in any offense, he looked like a chicken shit heel. Ultimately, this test run leans into the bad territory, but it's not terrible. And if you don't agree with that, I'll take your girl, your house, your masculinity and leave you eating gruel.